Welcome to uh, AP Euro, the flip version. This video will be covering the constitutionalism, the conflict between the Crown and Parliament. What is constitutionalism? Constitutionalism is the belief in the concept that uh, government is limited by law. Uh, this is a delicate balance between the rights of the people and the power of the government. And uh, we will see this play out over the coming uh, video. So why does uh, constitutionalism take place in England? Uh, for several reasons. The majority one uh, being that capitalism, uh, which has played a major role in the English uh, society at this point, has allowed for a high degree of social mobility, allowing uh, people to rise to the middle class. England at this point has a very large and growing middle class. Also, uh, England has had in much improvement in the agricultural techniques um, in farming, this allows for the middle class to grow and for there to be plenty of food for people to eat. Um, so it allows for people to sit around and think and challenge uh, and come up with new ideas. All right, so constitutionalism in England has a uh, three basic characters. We have the gentry or the wealthy landowners. They uh, are people that dominated the House of Commons, which is the lower parliament of England. Uh, many of these gentry were successful uh, lower class, moving up to middle class, uh, so they they benefited from capitalism. Uh, the gentry were willing to pay taxes if they had a say in how those national expenditures were spent through the House of Commons, which they dominated. Uh, they wanted to keep the king in check, um, and uh, this brought the king or the crown and the House of Commons into direct conflict. The next group are the Puritans. Uh, these are reform-minded Calvinists who wanted to purify the Church of England of in, by removing any Catholic element. Uh, they come into play uh, later in this act. And then the other big character is the Stuarts. This is the monarchy that existed at the time. Uh, they lacked the political astuteness of Queen Elizabeth. Um, they wanted absolute power, but Parliament would not allow it. Uh, there were four Stuart monarchs. You had James I, Charles I, Charles II, and then James II. Um, and we'll get into each of them in a little bit. How do we get to civil war? There are two issues that lead to this civil war. First, can the king rule without the consent of parliament? Um, and would the parliament allow that? And secondly, the Anglican church's hierarchy. Uh, there were those that wanted the king, who was also known as the Archbishop of Canterbury, to be the ruler and set the church doctrine. And then there was the Presbyterian view, which allowed for freedom of consciousness and would allow for dissent among church members. Um, but still being part of the same church. Uh, these two issues are played out um, as we go from different Stuart monarch and eventually into the English Civil War. So after Queen Elizabeth dies, uh, she left no direct heir to the throne, um, and so James IV of Scotland was to become James I of England, uh, giving England its first Scottish king. Uh, James I uh, believed in the divine right of kings, uh, wanted to be an absolutist, absolutist, uh, like his contemporaries in France, that being Henry IV, and then later Louis XIII, and eventually XIV. Um, and in doing this, he twice divide, uh, dissolves Parliament over issues of taxation and then parliamentary demands for free speech. Um, the taxes issue was due to the fact that Elizabeth left behind a large debt um, and needed some money to pay it off. Uh, and then James also kind of discredits the monarchy, uh, he wise, unwisely flaunts off his wealth. He would walk around uh, showing off his wealth at all times. Um, and uh, not to mention the fact that he would flaunt his male lovers. Um, and it would damage the prestige of the monarchy, both within England and outside. After James' death, we have uh, Charles I take over. Uh, he is the son of James I. Like James, he believes in the divine right of kings and the absolute authority of himself as king to rule over and without parliament. Uh, he also sought to control the Church of England. Uh, there were many issues that pitted Charles I versus the parliament, uh, the biggest being that of taxes. Charles needed money to fight wars, um, and he needed it quickly, uh, and parliament wouldn't always give it to him. Uh, so to save money, uh, Charles uh, quartered English soldiers in English homes during wartime, a very unpopular move. Um, some English nobles were arrested for refusing to lend money to the government. 
Um, by 1628, both houses of Parliament uh, were firmly opposed to the king. Uh, so much, in fact, that they uh, issued the Petition of Right in 1628. Uh, it was Parliament's attempt to encourage the king to grant basic legal rights in return for granting an increase in taxes. Uh, the provisions that Parliament want, only Parliament would have the right to levy taxes, gifts, loans, or contributions to the government. Uh, no one should be imprisoned or detained without due process of law. Uh, all had right of habeas corpus or a trial. No forced quartering of soldiers in homes of private citizens. And martial law could not be declared in peacetime. These should sound somewhat familiar. Um, in response, Charles disbands Parliament in 1629. Uh, he wanted money. They refused to increase, ta increase taxes without consent. Um, and so Charles tells him, go home. Uh, Charles then effectively rules between 1629 and 1640 um, as an absolute monarch. He raised money using medieval forms of forced taxation, uh, meaning that if you had a certain wealth, you would pay taxes. He also collected what was called ship money. Uh, all counties are now required to pay to outfit ships where before only those coastal communities had to pay. Um, and uh, religious persecution of Puritans became the biggest reason for the Civil War, English Civil War, um, that started underneath Charles I. Um, and so this brings us to uh, two parliaments that come up as a response. So by 1640, uh, Charles is in desperate need of money, um, and so he must call Parliament. Uh, it is in response to a Scottish military revolt um, in 1640. It occurred when Charles attempts to impose the English Book of Prayer on the Scottish Presbyterian Church. Ouch. Um, Charles needed taxes to fight this war against Scotland. Um, Parliament was reconvened in 1640, but refused to grant Charles any new taxes if he did not uh, accept the rights outlined in the Petition of Right and grant church reforms. So Charles' response? To disband Parliament only a month later. Problem is, Charles is desperate for money. Um, and so much, in fact, that the Scottish have now invaded northern England, um, Charles finally agrees to give Parliament certain demands in exchange for money so that he cannot be turned into Scotland. Um, these the concessions that he makes is that Parliament could be dissolved, could not be dissolved without its own consent. Parliament had to meet a minimum of once every three years. That ship money was abolished. The leaders of the persecution of Puritans were to be tried and executed. The Star Chamber uh, was abolished. This was a way of uh, suppressing nobles. The common law courts were now supreme to the king's courts. And uh, the parliament would refuse to raise funds for an army uh, to defeat the Irish uh, revolt. So this uh, then sets up the the theater for war. Uh, due to the demands of the long parliament, uh, we roll right into a English Civil War. The immediate cause of this is that Charles tries to arrest civil Puritans in parliament, but a crowd of over 4,000 came to parliament's defense. The reason for Charles wanting to arrest the Puritans? The Irish rebellion that the uh, parliament, was, parliament refused to fund uh, a army for uh, so Charles tries to arrest them. They have a crowd, uh, and it breaks out into war. In response to all of this, uh, in 1642, Charles declares war against his opponents in Parliament. Charles's army comes from nobility, rural country gentry, and mercenaries. Uh, the Civil War has two sides. You have cavaliers who support the king. These are clergy and supporters of the English church. Uh, old gentry, nobility, north and west eventually Irish Catholics, who feared Protestantism more than Anglicanism. On the other side, you have roundheads, or Calvinists, who opposed the king, considered larger, consisted largely of Puritans and Presbyterians, allied with Scotland in return for guarantees that the Presbyterianism would be imposed on England after the war, uh, supported by Presbyterian-dominated London, uh, compromised a majority of businessmen, included some nobles in the south and east, 
and had the support of the Navy and the Merchant Marines. So, if you're just looking at it from a military standpoint, the Roundheads are in much better uh, condition than the Cavaliers. They have foreign support and a Navy and the Merchant Marines. Um, so it's no surprise who is going to win this. It should be no surprise that the Roundheads, uh, those Calvinists, uh, eventually win uh, the English Civil War in 1649. They are led by Oliver Cromwell, who is a fierce Puritan independent and military leader, leader of the New Model Army. Uh, the final battle was at the Battle of Nasby. Uh, Charles surrenders himself to the Scots in 1646. Um, Parliament then orders the army to be disbanded. Cromwell says no. Um, it's a good thing he said no, because Cromwell then successfully thwarts a Scottish invasion. Charles um, had promised Scotland a Presbyterian system if they would help defeat Cromwell. Too bad they lost. Um, so, uh, then there is the Pride's Purge. Uh, elements of the New Model Army, without Cromwell's knowledge, removed all of non-Puritans and Presbyterians from Parliament, leaving what was known as a Blanc Parliament, with only one-fifth of the members remaining. Um, Charles was beheaded in 1649, and this ends the Civil War the first king in European history to be executed by his own subjects. Way to go, Charles. Oliver Cromwell uh, is now effectively the leader of England. Uh, under him, we have two periods of rule. We have the interim, which is the rule without a king, and the protectorate, uh, which is where Oliver Cromwell assumes the role of Lord Protector. In effect, he's a dictator. Um, in the interim, uh, the Commonwealth, a republic that abolishes the monarchy and the House of Lords, uh, takes over, and Cromwell is kind of the military state leader um, at this time. Uh, this takes place between 1649 and 1660. This is the whole period of Cromwell being in charge. Within that period, you have the Protectorate. Um, the Protectorate is when uh, Oliver Cromwell dissolves the Rump Parliament in 1653 after a series of disputes. England is then divided into 12 districts. Under each district is a military general who is in control. I, Cromwell then denies religious freedoms to Anglicans and Catholics. Why? He's a uh, large, independent uh, Puritan. So he's wanting everybody to be just like him. Uh, Cromwell had some military campaigns. He invades Ireland to put down an Irish uprising. And he even conquers Scotland at one point. Um, but Cromwell does die. He is human. Um, and his son, Richard, was highly ineffective as a leader. And it's under Richard that we have the restoration of the English monarchs. So in 1660, a cavalier parliament restores Charles II as king. Uh, and this is done uh, in response to things that had happened under Cromwell. Um, while in exile, Charles II, the son of Charles I, had agreed to abide by a parliament's decision, uh, decisions in a post-war settlement. So Charles had effectively said, if you put me back in as king, you can have your way. Um, parliament was stronger in relation uh, to the king than ever before in England. The king's power was not absolute anymore. He had to get permission from parliament to do certain things. Charles agreed to a significant degree of religious toleration especially for Catholics, to whom he was partial. Um, Charles was known as the Merry Monarch for his a fable uh, personality. He was happy quite a bit. Um, so now we have a parliament who has just as much power as the king, um, if not more, uh, within England. You have religious toleration. Um, because of a parliament, you now have the development of political parties. You have two parties. You have the Tories, which are the nobles and gentries and Anglicans who supported the monarchy over parliament. These are very conservative political figures. And then you have the Whigs. These are the middle class and Puritans who favored parliament and a religious toleration. In a classical sense, they are more liberal. And so now we have gone from having a absolute monarch in Queen Elizabeth through the Stuarts to a uh, reign of effectively no king, a military state, back to a monarch, but now one that has to share par uh, power with parliament. Um, and so the England has become a stark contrast to France, who had an absolute monarchy, being that they are now constitutionalists.